Well, welcome back to another little segment related to nuclear energy. We've been looking at just in general what nuclear reactions are. And so the next couple of parts, part four and I think part five and maybe even beyond, I'm going to focus on some ways of categorizing different nuclear reactions. So in this first part here, part four, I want to focus specifically on the difference between a fission reaction and a fusion reaction. They're very similar in sounding, very similar in spelling, but they're very different in terms of what they are, what happens during the reaction, and some of the other features. So I'm going to use some slides that I found online from several different sources. I found mine from the Department of Energy, and it'll go through four key differences. So I'm not going to be writing on my paper, but you're going to write on your paper based on what you see on the slides. It's a little different way of taking notes, but I also think it's an important thing for you to learn. So the good thing is you don't have to do this live and keep up with me. You can stop and pause. You can go back and make sure you got all the information. You're going to see that the slides are actually pretty simple to follow. So there's four of them. And the way you're going to want to lay it out is kind of like in two columns, because that's how the slides are going to be. The difference between fission and fusion. Okay, so I'll kind of talk through the slides as we show them here. So I recommend first that you just kind of describe fission versus fusion in terms of the definition. Um, and what they have in common is what you see here in this white box. So they're both physical processes. They both produce energy. And it's all about energy that is sort of hidden or stored within the atoms. And in particular, we're talking about the nucleus of the atoms. We talked back when we studied chemistry in first semester about <clears throat> energy stored in the electrons and the location of the electrons. That's a chemical energy. This is a very different and much, much greater amounts of energy. So real power in these nuclear reactions. So here's one difference here. Fission, again, on the left and fusion on the right. <clears throat> and so maybe a small little sketch of the two here, for example, um, you can see uh, we have a nucleus, and what you see over here is a little particle that's about to bombard it, crashes into it, and in the process, it splits into two or more smaller nuclei, okay? Nuclei, remember, is the plural of nucleus. Sometimes these are referred to as the daughter um, nuclei, but we can just call them the products. So here we have the reactants, here we have the products. When we start with a larger one and end with two or more smaller ones, that's called fission. And over here, if we start with two or more smaller ones and end with a larger one, that's when it's known as fusion. So think of the word fusing. Fusing is coming together. Okay, you probably heard that. Um, there's other words related to these. For example, a fissure in the earth. A fissure is the, in the earth is like a crack in the earth. You may have heard that when you studied um, like earth science, okay? Here's the next difference if you're ready to move on, and it's how these different processes are used. The one, and this is probably the most important use for here, where we live on the earth, is we can produce uh, electricity. I don't want to say energy production. They call it energy production. Well, we already have the energy. We're just turning it into something more useful, in particular, electricity. So we have nuclear-powered generating plants, and they make electricity out of this stored nuclear energy, okay? But that's only done through a fission kind of reactions. As of right now, there is no good use of fusion here on Earth. Scientists have not, be, have not been able to practically recreate the fusion process that happens. Um, now... It is a very important process, and I want you to know this, and maybe just add it to it. It's not on this slide, but add it to there. Um, the sun's energy is produced by fusion. So up in the sun, there are hydrogen atoms that are constantly crashing into each other and forming helium atoms. Very powerful, a lot of energy given off. Now, when that energy comes off, it comes off not in a nuclear form, but in the form of heat and light or we called it thermal energy and electromagnetic energy. And those then can travel through space and hit us here on the Earth. And so we end up 
getting good useful energy, but it actually starts in a form up on the sun um, that we cannot recreate down here. So, so far we have not be, been able to harness the energy of the sun and, and get it to practically be used here on Earth. Okay, let's look at the amount of energy that's involved in these nuclear processes. First of all, in the fission, and these are, again, the ones that we can recreate and use in, in power generating plants. We can put it on submarines. Maybe someday we'll have nuclear powered cars and you'll be able to put a tiny little amount of, of matter into your car and run it for years. Because that's it's because we have a million times greater than other energy sources. So if we have, let's say, a, a gram of material that we get a nuclear reaction from, it would be way, way more energy than if we had tons and tons that we were getting, let's say, chemical energy from. So way more energy packed into these, these little amounts of mass in the fission process. Now in fusion, if we could get it to work practically, there's even more than that. You see here on the chart, three to four times as much. That's why up in the sun, this fusion process is so very uh, helpful. It's because there's so much energy packed into that process. Now let's look at one of the negatives of this. This is like what we call a byproduct or um, some of the leftovers, I guess, after a nuclear reaction is done. And in the fission process, we have what's known as nuclear waste. And that stuff is still rather dangerous, that the energy contained in some of these nuclei is powerful enough that if it gets out, it can um, interact with actual cells and DNA inside your body. We're going to talk about this later on in, in the, the unit. Um, but that has to be contained. And so we put it in really, really thick containers. We bury it under lots and lots of lead and concrete. But still, nevertheless, this stuff has to be buried somewhere or put somewhere. And so that used nuclear fuel, as it's known, uh, is really one of the most problematic parts of using nuclear energy. Like, where do you bury that stuff? It's like your, your nuclear trash. And it's not like regular trash where you just make a mountain out of it. This is, this is real powerful stuff and um, still a problem that's yet to be solved. Okay. Um, we have some byproducts of fusion, um, but again, here on Earth, that's not an issue because we have not be, been able to practically use the fusion process in anything. Okay. So, there are the four key aspects. Let me run through again, just so you can see. Make sure you got them down. Just a general description of the difference between fission and fusion, and then how they're used practically. Remember, we added to this one that, although it's not practical, it is used in the sun's process of turning its hydrogen into helium, and then us being able to get both heat and light from that. And then we looked at the amounts of energy involved, and I want you to know that fusion is more powerful, contains more energy in the process than fission does, and fission more so than the normal things like chemical reactions that we have. And finally, the waste or the byproducts that we get from these. Okay. All right. So I think that's going to do it here. Um, I've got a little practice for you to use for this, but I do want you to be familiar if I use those terms fission and fusion, that you can picture in your mind um, what's going on in those. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.